Contest. Impressive. Ready for battle. One of my co-hosts here at CGR was talking to me one day about really long games. Like 20 hours or more. It was all I could do to keep from firing my taco out my nose. I'd never been one to consider 20 hours really long. Arkrise Fantasia clocks in at around 50 to 80 hours depending on how much of the world you explore, and that's about where I like a game to land. Unfortunately, for the first couple hours, Arkrise Fantasia is almost painfully cliché. You've got a fleet of airships facing off against a swarm of dragons, and when an entire armored division is prepped and ready for the fight, to the front strides a pissed off looking teen with a stupidly huge sword, wearing next to no armor and who goes toe to toe with a several story tall drake, runs it through with said sword, falls off the airship, down thousands of feet, landing in a forest, but he rolls when he lands so he's okay. Except that apparently dead dragons are a form of volatile explosive and just as his prey is about to go boom, a confused sheltered girl appears, sings a song and fixes everything. If you need to take a break after all that, go right ahead. I sure had to. What's next, horrible voice acting? Oh, why sure. You, you saved me, didn't you? Arkrise Fantasia does everything in the early game to put you off actually completing it. And that's a shame because if you have the dedication or a mandate from your editor to push through it, you'll find that what starts a ridiculous hackneyed premise for an adventure quickly becomes downright interesting. A tangled web of intrigue soon develops, involving feuding religions, each with their own designs on the end times, and their own figurehead girl representing their hopes and dreams. You press on, not knowing what is right and what is wrong, because both sides make damn good arguments. I don't think there's a moral absolute anywhere in this game, and that's fine with me. Mechanically, you participate in turn-based battles where up to three party members spend action points from a pool to attack, defend, cast, and occasionally blow shit up. While one member could spend all the AP his or herself, attacks resolve faster and more efficiently if each character shares the load. The battles themselves have a fair strategic element to them as position on the field can be critical. The magic system uses a tiered MP system, much like the original Final Fantasy, with spells unlocked by collecting orbs and arranging them in each character's magic grid. Weapons collected throughout the game contain 4x4 grids full of jewels that unlock as they're used. While some enhancements are intrinsic to the weapon itself, others can be removed and placed in newer, better arms. As easy as it gets. The sound is split right down the middle, though the English vocals are abysmal. Come on, Liam O'Brien, I expect better. The musical element is outstanding, with compositions by Yasunori Mitsuda of Chrono Trigger and Xenogears fame. Fortunately, you can just turn the vocal volume to zero and eliminate one of the primary frustrations of this very engaging RPG. The first three or four hours may be downright awful, but the 60-some that follow are much, much better. Diligence certainly does pay off. 